What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back in Bordeaux. I'm sorry I didn't have a video yesterday. Uh, as I mentioned during the live stream that I did yesterday, which hasn't gone up yet because it's still processing because YouTube is stupid. Um, I basically have kind of shifted my own personal schedule because of Budge Budge, my dog, which we are taking into an appointment uh, later today, which I'll... I'll clarify some of those details a little bit later in the video, just for those of you interested. But I just wanted to mention that's why there was no video yesterday, as I just I got too busy with real life stuff and didn't have time. So uh, the event itself is the St. Cubeslick event, which means that there are the Flux Beasts, and there's a lot of different mounts that you can get out of this event. I'm not going to promise you guys that I'm going to show you all of them because you can just refer to my... Uh, other event videos relating to the St. Cubes Lick event uh, because frankly speaking I've been playing this game for many many years and I don't remember everything that happens every single event because they add like one mount here and one mount there and it's just weird. Uh, so let's get uh, started with the event itself which is to meet with St. Cubesley. So he's going to end up being this stupid idiot right here. You just interact with him. There you go. No problem. Which by the way uh, my flux video my flux farming video for this year turns out uh yeah wash tater tates tots totter tates i don't care what this game calls them so anyway you just interact with him and you'll get a lucky star and then it wants you to buy lucky stars which you can buy some of these from him it wants you to buy three of them uh, and then you'll get another lucky star as a reward and then it wants you to throw one on the ground so what the lucky stars are going to essentially do is give you a buff that will show up in the top left uh, it's a five minute buff that allows you to see the flux beast as far as I recall is something relating to the event or maybe it's just the pot of gold. I, I, I don't know. I think it's just the dungeon bosses themselves. So anyways, then the next part is to defeat a luck beast. Now, the difference between this year's St. Cubesley event and last year's St. Cubesley event uh, is that this time the bosses of dungeons are the luck beast and the flux beast and stuff like that. So it's kind of interesting because in previous years, they were just random enemies out in the environment. Now, what I don't know is did the devs change their drop rates to compensate for the fact that we fight them in dungeons now? Because fighting them in dungeons means that we arguably fight less of them than we did in previous years because they were just spread around every biome, right? And so that means that the potential drops out of them might be a lot more rare now. I, if I had to guess, I'd say the devs didn't change anything uh, with the drop rates to compensate, but they should have. Anyways, you have to uh, defeat a luck beast in Desert Frontier. That's the new one this year. Neon City, Luminopolis, and Jurassic Jungle. And then you get an R, uh, lucky, uh, lucky Star. And then it wants you to collect Sir O'Lucky coins, which when you end up defeating a dungeon, there's going to be an additional chest that shows up. You just destroy that chest and then you end up getting some of the uh, coins. You got to get up to 15 of them. Doesn't matter what Uber world you're in, by the way. Then you get an R-Lucky star. And then it wants you to defeat a Flux Beast. Now, the Flux Beasts are from three-star dungeons. Once again, referring to the Luck Beast being from one-stars and the Flux Beasts being from three-stars, which technically means that if I'm not mistaken, they are actually more common than the Luck Beasts were in previous years because the Flux Beast was already a rare occurrence out in the open world. Uh, so now you can consistently farm them. So I guess it's a bit of a trade-off. Anyways, you get an R Lucky Star from that. Who cares? Uh, craft something at the Pot O' Gold. So the way that this works is when you defeat the Flux Beast in a three-star dungeon, uh, there's going to end up being a Pot of Gold that spawns that basically looks the same as this one in the hub, just it's not a mini Pot of Gold, it's a big one. Uh, and basically just interacting with it, you'll see that it has like a slew of different items and so on and so forth, which you are going to have to craft for the quest line. But anyways, moving on, um, it just wants you to craft anything and then you'll get a luck beast haunch. And then the next part is to bait a lucky's stone. Now, I hope I got a clip of this. I'm pretty sure I do. I'll show footage for you guys uh, if I do. Uh, basically, there's this random rock that you can find out in the environment. It's uh, in all of the different biomes, but it's pretty easy to see in desert. At least I think so anyways. Apparently, the rock is quite rare. I did stumble across a couple of them just casually while I was doing this event. And anyways, it wants you to bait the stone by essentially putting the food item on it. 
So the food item is going to be crafted out of the uh, the big pot of gold, uh, and it's going to end up requiring a couple different resources. The one most important one that I remember is it costs five tater tots. Uh, you can buy these on the market and then wash them yourselves, and they are going to be cheaper than if you buy them out of this guy's inventory because he's kind of a scam. But arguably, even buying it off the player market is also a scam because it's ridiculously overpriced right now because nobody likes gardening. Yet the devs keep putting it into these stupid events. So anyways, you just wash a bunch of tater tots, craft that stupid thing, bait the rock by interacting with it with the food, and then you'll end up getting 10 Sir O Lucky coins. And then it wants you to collect some luck snakes. So there's going to be a bunch of snake enemies that will end up spawning uh, from the rock. You defeat a bunch of them, and then there will be tiny little snakes down left over on the ground, and you just throw one of your lucky stars down, and it essentially just grabs them all in a net of sorts. I don't know. Uh, and you have to end up grabbing five of them. That's going to be very important for some of the other items later on, but we'll talk about that in a minute. You end up getting 10 more lucky coins from that. And then it wants you to send Lux Snakes to the mini pot of gold. So you go right back to the hub, go over to the mini pot of gold, and then this is essentially the donation station. So you can donate uh, donate Luck Beast Hunch, which is just dropped from the Luck Beast. Uh, you can send coins, which you end up not only getting out of the, you know, the event itself, but also just out of doing dungeons and stuff. And then you can also send Lux Snakes, which you got to send them five at a time, which is a bit brutal. And then you'll end up, uh, for completing this part of the quest, you'll end up gaining a Fragment of Luck. And then last but not least is going to end up being Find Sir O'Lucky. So the funny thing is that uh, the quest itself says that you find them at a Unity Shrine. So you know when you open up your map, obviously you guys on console can see it a lot easier than me because I've got the mini map mod. Uh, but when you open up your map and you see the Gather Three Trovians thing, that's what the Unity Shrine is, which apparently the map legend does say, but it's been a few years since I ended up actually not using the minimap mod, so <clears throat> my perspective is warped. And then for completing that part of the quest, you'll end up getting the Pot O Bombs, uh, which is a Bomber Royale style, so who cares? Uh, but you get 20 mastery out of it, so whatever. Uh, and then that's essentially going to end up being it for the event itself, which you can get over and done within about like 20 minutes or something. It's, it's ridiculously short. But now in comes the big grind because uh, there's going to end up being all these different items. There's going to end up being another bomb skin that's just a rock. There's an ally, another ally, a mount, and then an even bigger mount that ends up flying. And you can see that these costs Fragments of luck. How do you get fragments of luck? Well, you get them for doing these donations. They have a rare chance of giving you a fragment of luck. Now, what that essentially means is the devs have added the snakes. That's the new enemy type uh, that is related to the event, which if I had to guess means that there is going to be a very rare uh, flux beast style of snake. Might, we might even be able to see it on the market. I'll check in a second, but it's probably going to be ridiculously expensive because unfortunately, the only way that you can fight these snakes is by crafting the food item at the uh, big pot of gold. And how do you craft the food item? With tater tots. Five of them each, which means that's if you buy it off of this guy, that's 50K per like one donation of snakes. So I would not recommend touching the snakes unless you're of course trying to get the mount itself as a drop because it'll probably be worth a hefty amount otherwise if you're just trying to end up getting the fragments of luck you're going to end up uh wanting to just grind the coins which is just out of dungeons and grinding the luck beast haunch which is also just out of dungeons so let me actually craft 18 of these just so that we can see uh we were at 11 and now we are at 18. now it does mean that it is going to roughly take you like a few hours to grind even just this one mount alone. I'd say probably like three to four hours in total of just nonstop grinding, but you know, maybe maybe you get quicker than that. I don't know. Uh, I was grinding for about like, I, I was grinding the event for let's say an hour uh, and I got up to 18. So 
it's it's still gonna take a couple hours but either way that's how you end up getting that bad boy and you gotta remember that there is also going to end up being uh you know the luck beast themselves they have their own mount uh, and then there's the flux beast themselves they also have their own mount so there's a a variation of each of the mounts that you can end up getting as uh rare drops uh so it seems like there's actually just the normal sorcerer's snake good lord okay so i guess you can craft it or you can just uh find a tradable version just craft it because it's cheaper and more cost effective time wise and then this is just going to end up being a worm mount anyway so don't worry about it uh but if we for example is it flex beast is that what they're called yeah so for example you see there's a little ally um then there's also going to end up being the flex beast mount which these are very very rare uh, arguably, again, they'll be less rare this year because you just have to complete three-star dungeons over and over. But if you get lucky enough to get one of those bad boys, awesome. The thing that you got to keep in mind is that each of the different biomes effectively will have different flux beasts, as far as I know. Uh, in the desert, I saw the Jurassic creatures, like the Quetzal and stuff like that. But there is also going to end up being the T-Rex variant as well, which is what that Flux Beast was that I saw and yeah, so on and so forth. So last two things that I just got to let you guys know about uh, is that once again, the Curio Merchant has some amazing costumes, which I will have a video highlighting if you are OK with waiting, because I'll probably put that video out maybe tomorrow or something like that. Um, I guess it really well, we'll see um, probably tomorrow. And then lastly, I just wanted to mention why was there no video yesterday and what's going on with Budge Budge? For those of you that don't know, my dog's injured. Uh, check out the other video where I, you know, talked about it uh, and essentially what happened. Long story short, this week uh, or, or later today, she is going in to get a scan and kind of see what's going on with her. And then they're probably going to tell us, oh, she needs surgery. And we're going to say <laughs> not for $10,000. She doesn't. Uh, and she's probably just going to have wobbly legs for the rest of her life because that's just how dogs are. The thing is that Budge Budge is in great spirits. You know, she's still just an absolute sweetheart of a dog. She's always happy and uh, she doesn't really let it keep her down. She's still trying to jump on the couch right now, even despite the fact that she's injured. So that's like now we're getting into the first week of her having this issue which means that it's becoming the most difficult from this point on because now she thinks she's fine that's kind of the one thing that uh those of you that don't own dogs will not know is a dog is doesn't know that anything's wrong because they live in the moment 100 percent, and so she's going to keep acting like everything is fine yeah uh but anyways with that said you know she's gonna we're gonna see what's going on with her more seriously uh, today when we get her scanned, we're not going to do any surgery because it's just way too expensive and honestly it's not going to do anything in the long run anyways, let's face it. Um, and then the week after, so next week, we have to go in and get her like a follow-up checkup. So far everything seems good, she's healing very well, so we'll see what happens. Um, the funny thing is that even though the vet said that it was her back, the one thing that I still notice going on with Budge Budge is her left back leg, which is what I was suspect of in the first place. But anyways, I don't want to bore you with too much of the details. Just suffice to say that real life stuff came up. That's why I didn't have a video yesterday. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to have everything as regular as possible uh, because I needed to be awake all night today so that I could catch the morning appointment with Budge Budge and yeah, I'm on a night schedule like a goblin. Anyways, thanks for coming out, guys. I appreciate it. Smash like stuff for more. Buy the merch you want to support the channel and have a wonderful day.